Welcome to this HFS video cast. I'm Mark Reed Edwards, marketing leader at HFS. Today we talk with one of the analysts behind the HFS retail and CPG services top 10 for 2022, which was just released. Joining me is research leader Melissa O'Brien. Melissa, welcome. Hi, thanks, Mark. It's great to have you here. So can you tell me what's at the core of the HFS retail and CPG services top 10? Yeah, absolutely. So this is just a fascinating space to watch right now. And everything with uh, retail and CPG has been sort of flipped on its head over the last year and a half or so. Um, so really the big elephant in the room, of course, is the pandemic and all of the changes that that's created for retailers and CPG firms, which, you know, as we know, are two very distinct and um, different sectors, but there's a lot of overlap. Uh, and a lot of demand that uh, ends up requiring the same kind of expertise. Yeah, so we we looked at the top service providers that provide services to uh, retail and CPG firms to understand what they're um, how they're approaching the market, what their clients need, and we spoke to fifty of those uh, of those customers actually, that some of the top leading largest retailers and CPG firms in the world. Uh, to understand what their needs are. And, you know, fundamentally, there's kind of an, an, existen an existential crisis that some of these firms have had over the last year and a half or so. Um, the pandemic shock just exacerbated the challenges that they had around customer trust. Um, supply chain is obviously a huge uh, issue with resiliency um, and product and service innovation too. So those are kind of the key themes that were at the core of uh, what we looked at for this uh, for this top ten report and uh, and the services that these um, that these providers are are offering. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I talk to a lot of people here at HFS about top tens, and the extensive nature of the research that goes into these top tens is something sometimes we just kind of gloss over. But you talk to fifty retailers in yeah. the course of doing this research, which is astounding to me. It's a really robust methodology that we have. And voice of the customer is 25% of the, the ranking itself, you know, behind the, the methodology, but it's also just an important way that we learn. This helps us shape our thinking about the markets that we cover. Um, and ultimately they're the ones that are driving the, the demand for these services. So understanding what is so important to them, um, what their goals are and their challenges are, is just really fundamental to, to the research. So yeah, it was a, it was a really robust study and a pretty tremendous uh, input from the, from the enterprise community and retail CPG. That's great. So, so a retailer, an enterprise reading this can read what their peers are saying, which is, which is uh, really hugely valuable, I would guess. Absolutely. And, um, you know, they're, they're all challenged with some of the same things fundamentally, especially if you look at CPG firms, which were set up many, many years ago in um, really, really pretty rigid silos, actually, um, and just trying to break out of that and looking at it through the lens of our one office, um, which is about breaking down those silos and how those firms are all, you know, really just trying to navigate their way um, on this journey toward one office, one ecosystem, um, which is a really challenging and, and multifaceted um, journey of digital investments, uh, adoption, reorganization, and, and reprioritization. So yeah. very, uh, very interesting stuff and, and challenging stuff. So can you tell me what you saw in the providers you studied and also what retailers and CPG firms are looking for? Yeah, absolutely. So what's really interesting about this retail space is the very industry specific um, innovation and um, investment that we've seen from the service providers. So um, all of the, the leading providers that we cover in this report have a very you know, specific platforms for retailers and CPG firms, frameworks. Um, they've done just a tremendous amount of research in this space to understand their customers and help their customers understand their customers. Um, so it's, it's really, um, you know, we're looking at a lot of supply chain expertise, um, e-commerce expertise, uh, stores of the future is really, really interesting space to watch. So when you're looking at how companies have pivoted, uh, e-commerce has just 
you know, exploded tremendously, but then there is still a, a place for, uh, for physical stores. So how you get that blending right. Um, so it's really interesting to see a lot of um, very industry specific research and innovation labs and things like that, that these service providers have done to help their customers. Um, and their customers obviously value that, that it's really important for them to have a partner who understands their business. They've got executive leadership that has been in their shoes before that has retail and CPG expertise. Um, so all of that industry expertise is, is just super important for these clients. But fundamentally, you know, there's also just a, a horizontal view of this, which is they want a partner that's flexible um, and that has strong technology partnerships and that is able to, um, you know, just understand their, their business and their, their language and the way that they work. Um, so that's probably the top thing that we heard from all of those uh, interviews that we did from references was I just need a solid partner that I can rely on uh, and talent too. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention talent as retailers, just like every other industry are struggling right now, um, you know, coming up on kind of a, a, a talent crisis, if you will. And so having partners, service provider partners that have the expertise, have talent and are able to attract and retain that talent is uh, tremendously important to them. I think every top 10, and in fact, in the last one of these that I recorded, uh, every top 10 mentions talent. It's, it's uh, the issue of the day. And we covered it yeah. last uh, December with the great resignation debate. It's, it's just uh, something that has not really crept up on us. We kind of knew it was an issue, but it seems to just dominate everyone's thoughts these days. It is. Yeah, it's absolutely becoming the it's going to be the issue of the year. Um, just figuring out this um, this talent crunch. Uh, and it's a it's a long term issue. You know, if you look at these retailers that are you know planning out into the future, um, as I mentioned, on their journey to one ecosystem that requires like a lot of different thinking uh, and different skill sets. Um, so these re retailers are really looking ahead and, and they're relying quite a bit on their partners, their service providers to, uh, to help them on that. And retailers, you know, um, to a certain extent, rely on talent as, at the front line. Every business needs talent, but having well-informed, uh, you know, people on the floor of a store is absolutely critical and happy people too, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all about enabling them, empowering them. Um, I remember it was um, January 2020. The last conference I went to in person was NRF, the National Retail Federation, um, in January two years ago. And the big theme there was employee experience and how do you enable that, um, that empowerment, the, you know, happiness of the, at the storefront. Um, and that has just, it, it, it's, it's become even more important because now you're thinking about safety and wellness and, uh, you know, touchless service, which by the way, that was a, a, a trend that, you know, was, was picking up back then. And now it's just only accelerated, you know, how can we make things more seamless and also make things um, safer? And so that people don't have to, um, you know, people can operate in the store within the confines of their comfort zone. So right. it's, it's really an interesting space to watch. Yeah. So speaking of interesting, you've got an interesting list of top providers. Can yeah. you give me an overview of who they are and what they mm -hmm. excel at? Absolutely. So Accenture came in top uh, this year. So by the way, this is a refresh of a, a 2019 report, um, obviously looking at it through a fresh lens. Uh, and one of the newer things about all of our top tens is that a big part of the um, assessment is now around that one office that we talked about. So specifically um, how these service providers are helping their clients break down the silos and connect front to back um, offices uh, and, and how they're doing that internally as well. Um, so that's just a, a big point to note. Uh, and Accenture performed uh, performed really well uh, across all the categories, of course, to come in number one, um, but definitely uh, has a one of the more mature um, service offerings in the space, which has a really wide breadth across um, the, the retail and CPG value chain from, you know, front office to supply chain, um, digital commerce. And then TCS came in uh, number two, which uh, 
they're also, you know, obviously just really impressive breadth and depth of services, but a large, large retail practice. Um, so they've got a, a tremendous amount of employees dedicated to this space. Uh, and they've also got a lot of that um, retail specific IP that we mentioned earlier. So very um, retail oriented IP platforms, um, merchandising, supply chain, you know, across the whole value chain. So, and they've got some of that stuff patented. So strong performance for TCS as well. Uh, Wipro came jumping up in this report to number three um, and, and similar in that vein, but also um, got a lot of great feedback on the voice of customer from Wipro and their flexibility and their approach. Um, and then rounding out the top five, we saw Tech Mahindra and Infosys. Um, and there again with, with those guys, just really, you know, a robust global operations and resources, um, looking at a lot of investment in, in the RCPG space um, between acquisitions and research and um, building out those platforms that we talked about. Well, that's great. It's a, it's a great report that I read this morning and uh, recommend everybody go to hfsresearch.com to read this uh, top 10, along with all of our research and a growing library of video casts just like this one. Melissa, thanks for joining me here. Great. Thank you, Mark. We'll see you on the next HFS video cast.